Hello, people of God. It is a different time, a time in which we cannot gather as is our impulse and inclination. But we're going to try gathering this way and hear the word of the Lord as it speaks to us. And hopefully it will be a comfort to us and to our world and to our neighbors. This would have been for the third Sunday in Lent, a season in which we pause to reflect, to repent, and to begin again. In our scheduled worship for this Sunday, we would have enjoyed the participation in the baptism of Ethan Dale Schaefer, son of Tina and Hagen Schaefer. We will celebrate with them and remember them in our prayers, and you may perhaps want to reach out to them as well. Our sermon today, which is going to be a homily for this purposes, focuses on the idea of the life cycle of faith and the outpouring of God's grace. There are three readings today that speak to this theme. The first is a reading from Exodus, which recounts for us one of the first encounters that Moses had with the people of God in the wilderness when they discovered that there was no water for them to drink. So Moses appeals to God. God tells Moses what to do to go and strike the rock and water will come out. Moses goes, does, and the water appears. The passage concludes that Moses gave the name of the place two Hebrew words because, as the text said, the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? I can't think of a better way than begin our time together with that question. Because as faithful as we might be, that is a question that passes through the mind of all of us from time to time, and maybe especially in these times. Is the Lord with us or not? We, we, faith tells us that, of course, the Lord is with us. But our humanity may be something else. It's not a new question for us. It wasn't new for the people of God in the wilderness. And it surfaces again and again throughout the eons of time. In the second reading appointed for this day from Romans, the Apostle Paul answers this question in a very definitive way that echoes through the ages. He says, We boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Indeed, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So as we begin our time away, from the gathered assembly in this place, I think it might be helpful to remember that the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And though we are not physically in the same room, we are still connected. We are still each a part of the body of Christ. The gospel for today, for this Sunday, is a story of Jesus and the Syrian woman at the well where Jesus asks this woman for a drink of water. And she questions him. She queries him back and says, why are you asking me for a cup of water? Because their peoples had their differences. And Jesus responds to her and said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. Like so many of the encounters of Jesus, this conversation happens on at least two planes. The literal plane of drinking water and getting water from a well and Jesus talking about something far, far different, metaphorical, spiritual, on another plane. It's helpful again, I think, in the times of our own trial here, in the times of truffling trial for our world, to remember that our Lord has poured out for us this living water, this faith in Christ. Not only for us, but for all of those in our world who are suffering, who have died, or perhaps are in the process of dying. 
It's important to remember that this trial is not the will of God and that our Lord is one who comes into our human existence and walks with us through moments just like these so that we know and hopefully never forget that we are not alone. The outpouring of God's love is not always as clear to us as it seems at other times, but it is still there. We are still blessed and we pray for the blessings of God, not only upon ourselves and our congregation, but all of the children and all of the creation. For God so loved the world that Jesus came to show us what that love looks like. I hope the days ahead will bring you some peace and some comfort. Even though we're not sure exactly how everything will turn out, we are confident that the God we love and worship and who has called us into being will be with us and will bring meaning to these days. In closing, I'd like to pray. pray. This is actually the prayer appointed for this day as a way of concluding our brief time together. Let us pray. Merciful God, the fountain of living water, you quench our thirst and wash away our sin. Give us this water always. Bring us to drink from the well that flows with the beauty of your truth through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May God bless you and keep you in these days and all the days to come. And the blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit keep you and us in the care of God's hands. Amen.